to this is Claire from Eclair Makery and today I will be showing you how to make a Pizza My Heart um, heart shaped pizza amigurumi that I have crocheted here. Now this is a great pattern um, if you are a beginner and you want to just learn some fun techniques and it uses bobble stitches as the little pepperonis on it and in order to create this two-toned yarn I just held two strands of DK weight yarn together. It does involve a technique where we will be joining two little pieces made in the round together but I will show you how to do each and every one of those steps so that it is super easy and you'll be able to whip this up in no time. So in order to make the pizza we are going to be needing some yarn. I used Mary Maxim's Amigurumi yarn, which is a weight free um, cotton blend yarn that is great for working with amigurumi. Now you might be wondering, okay, if you're holding two of the strands together to make this piece, then how do you get the bobbles to work? Well, since the bobbles are made using double crochet stitches, it works up so that they're the same height as when you hold the two strands together and it doesn't add too much length when you are um, doing it with this piece that's made in just the normal DK weight. So we used this Mary Maxim weight 3 yarn. I also have a G6 4.0 millimeter crochet hook and then you'll need some safety eyes and their safety backings in order to make this as well as a embroidery needle and some embroidery thread in order to make the mouth. So let's go ahead and get started on this and you'll also need to make sure that you have a stitch marker to hold your place of your piece. To begin the Pizza My Heart Amigurumi, first we are going to start by making this top crust part which form the rounded edges of the heart. So to start that, we are going to make a magic circle. So how you do that is you will um, place your yarn on the back of your fingers like this and you're going to wrap it around and then make an X shape like this. And then when you flip your fingers over, you'll have two columns here. You will first put your hook under the first one and over the second one. Pull the yarn through and twist it up. And then we're gonna grab that second strand of yarn again and go like this that and pull it through this loop and now we will have this little circle here. Then we will single crochet five in this circle and you want to make sure that you single crochet over both of these little strands right here. That is key when you're doing this magic circle because the strands are what the circle is made out of. So you want to make sure that you are getting them. So four and five single crochets. And then once you have your single crochets in this circle, you're going to pull this strand here and pull the circle closed. And just like that, you've got a rounded little piece. Once you do that, you will single crochet two in each one of these single crochets that we just did and we want to make sure that we remember where the round started so we will place a stitch marker in the first single crochet of every round and then we will just do two single crochets in each of these stitches right here just like this And I see that my stitch marker fell out because I didn't secure it, but there we go. We've got our 10 stitches right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, 
So now that we have these 10 stitches here, we are going to single crochet one and then single crochet two in the next stitch. And let's make sure that we get that <laughs> stitch marker secure on there. And so you just want to repeat that same thing around, single crochet one and then single crochet two in the next stitch till you get to the end of the round here. Once you've gone all the way around with one single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch, we will do the next round, which is another increase round where we do two single crochets and make sure we get our stitch marker there. So one and two, and then we do our increase, which is two single crochets in the next stitch. And then we'll repeat that same thing all the way around. Two single crochets in the next two, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. And just keep going all the way around with that. And after we've done that increase round, now we're going to start on the next one. And this next one is just single crocheting and every single crochet around in this stitch. And that is going to be what our next two rounds are in this piece, is just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around for the next two rows. Once you have those two rounds of just single crocheting all the way around done, now we are going to fasten off this one piece right here. So we'll take our scissors and we are gonna cut this thread right here. And then we will slip this yarn through that loop and pull it closed and take our stitch marker out. And then you are going to repeat that same thing that we just did with this um, on, for a second piece, except that you won't be fastening off that next piece. So you want to just make another one of these rounds before we move on to the next part. Once you have finished your second round, we are not going to fasten off this piece, but instead we are just going to join this one with the one that we finished before. And I've just zoomed in a little bit more so that you guys can see this better since this can seem like it's super complicated at first, but when you see it done, it gets really nice and easy. So to join these two, I'm gonna line up the last stitch of that first round we did with the last one that we just did here. So I'm just going to line those and position those together. I'm going to hold my yarn exactly like I always do. And then I am going to insert my hook in this first stitch here and I'm going to insert it through both of the rounds. So through the stitch on this other round as well. So you'll see there now it is through both pieces. And then I'm gonna just single crochet like both of those are part of the same piece. And then I will do that on the next couple stitches as well, going through one stitch to the next. And I'm gonna do this same thing of inserting it into both and then single crocheting a total of five times and this will secure these two rounds together and then they will just be one entire piece. So we've got four and then one last one for five. And there, now both of them are joined together and now we are going to crochet around the entirety of this piece to create one round and so we are going to single crochet around and we're going to mark that first one that we're saying is the first of the round with a stitch marker so we know where to go and then we are going to just single crochet around every one of the stitches just like we were working on 
a normal piece and you when you get back to that first little stitch you want to have a total of 35 single crochets in this round so you'll just keep working all the way around till you get to that very last stitch and having 35 once you have single crocheted completely around this piece and had 34 stitches, you'll now have these two bumps and it, this is the crust of the pizza heart that we're doing. And after having these 35 stitches on here, this is the last round that we are going to be using the brown yarn with. So now we will be switching to the orange and yellow yarns. So I'm going to go ahead and just snip off this piece so that we don't have that brown ball of yarn in our way. And I will get our orange and yellow yarns. So these yarn, this yarn that I'm using is a DK weight yarn, which means it's a yarn weight three. And I have made, put two strands together of this Mary Maxim yarn in order to create the effect of the cheese, as you see here on the final little heart. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna just work with these two strands of yarn as if they are one piece. Now, if you find a variegated yarn that you like better that is even in a worsted weight yarn and you wanna use that instead of getting two DK weights, that can work too. Um, I just chose to work with these because I really love this yarn and I think they look really awesome together. Um, so we're going to take our stitch marker out and then we're going to just switch the yarn color and sometimes what I do, which I'll just show you guys how I switch it sometimes to help provide a seamless um, transition of colors is I sometimes take out the last stitch I did but only take it out halfway to the point where I have my two loops on my hook. And then I use the new color of yarn and I pull that through both of those loops to finish that last stitch of that last row. And then this creates a seamless transition of color because you won't have a noticeable thing of where the brown will cross over into the orange and yellow. It'll just be, okay, we ended on a brown and now we're gonna start going with the orange and yellow. And then now that we've switched the yarn colors and you'll just have to pull your little um, yarn threads so that it stays nice and tight on that those first couple stitches. And then you're gonna just single crochet all the way around like we just did but now you are going to use the orange and yellow colors to do it. And make sure that you mark that spot so that you can single crochet around. And you are gonna do this single crocheting around for the next two rows here. So this will be row three, on, uh, rows two and three on the main piece um, that you will see in the pattern right after we have joined all of the pieces together. So just do that single crocheting around in all the stitches till you, you have done this for a total of two rows. Now that we have our two rows of the cheese so far, which you'll see it doesn't add too much of a difference um, from what we did with the crust in terms of how wide it gets with using two strands of yarn. Now that we've got that, we are going to go ahead and we are going to start doing one decrease row here. So we are going to single crochet five and then after we have single crocheted five here, then we are going to do a decrease. And we will just keep repeating that all the way around doing a single crochet five and then a decrease till we get to the very end of this row. Once you have that round with decreases done, we are gonna begin our first row that has bobbles using the red 
yarn. And this will involve us switching back and forth between colors. So to begin this, we are going to start by single crocheting four. And as always, make sure your stitch marker is secure so that you do not lose your place at all. So we've got one, two, three, and then on this one, we are going to just do half of this single crochet stitch with the orange and yellow yarns, and then we're gonna take our red yarn, we'll put this orange and yellow yarn behind the stitches like this, or it looks like it's in front of it, and then we are gonna take this red yarn and finish off this single crochet stitch with that red yarn in there and then it will just be a normal single crochet and now we'll start working with this red yarn here to make this bobble stitch so to do the bobble stitch it is uh, basically a bunch of half double crochets so you yarn over insert your hook into that next single crochet yarn over again pull through the first two loops and then you just keep doing that in that same stitch until you have six loops on your crochet hook. And you want to make sure that you keep your um, loop that is your first one tight since it was just the um, one where we switched the yarn colors. You want to make sure that it doesn't come loose or undone. And there, now we've got six of those loops on our hook. And then we will yarn over and pull through all six of those loops. And we'll have our first bobble pepperoni. Then we're going to start by switching back to the orange and yellow. So we'll move the red yarn behind there. Bring the orange and yellow back to the front of our work and then we will start single crocheting again. And we are going to single crochet six. Make sure those loops are tight. Single crochet six or until we do another bobble. So that's three, four, five, and then we are gonna just do half of it with the orange and yellow and then we will switch back to the red and since there's a few stitches you're going to want to make sure that this red yarn is pretty loose in terms of being in the back um, because you don't want it to be too tight and then deform the piece that you're working with. So we'll just put that orange and yellow yarn behind there, finish off this stitch with the red yarn and then do our bobble stitch in this next single crochet, just like this. And you'll wanna make sure that your yarn doesn't get too tangled so that you can keep track of it. And make sure that um, it doesn't go in the front of your, in the front of your stitches because otherwise, it's gonna mess it up. Oops, sometimes the yarn will snag and that is okay. So you just go like that and then you put it and keep going back and forth until you complete this whole round with a couple different bobbles thrown in here. And just keep going like this until you get to the end of this round and make sure to just follow the pattern um, and do the amount of bobbles and switches that are required for this row, which will be round 11 on the pattern. So just keep going around doing that till you get to the end. Once your entire row with these bobble stitches are done, it will look like this. So there will be spaces with the orange and yellow yarn and then some bobbles spaced on here as the pepperonis. 
And once you've done this, you're going to just want to keep your red yarn kind of off to the side as you're working with just the orange and yellow in these next few rounds. And then you will just crochet all the way on this piece till you have done round 18. And that is when we will do our safety eyes and put the eyes and mouth onto this pizza. Once we've gotten to row 18, which will be after your third row that you did with bobbles in it, we are going to go ahead and put the eyes onto our pizza. So I am using eight millimeter safety eyes. I've got the eyes and then their backs right here. So I'll show you guys how to do that. You take the eye and we are gonna position them in the front. So here's the back of the work. We're gonna put it in the front of the work. And then I'm gonna space these eyes three stitches apart and put them right about here close to the bobbles on the front that were from our first row with bobbles in it. So once I've placed the eyes here, now I have to put the safety backs on them to make sure that they stay. So I'm gonna turn the work kind of inside out so that I can see inside here. And I'm gonna make enough space so that I can put this on. Then I will position this safety backing on the back of the safety eye and then I am just going to push down on there till it is completely secure like that and then we'll do that on the other eye as well and just position that and then press down and then you'll have both of your eyes secure on the pizza. Once we've got these eyes secured here on here, it's time to sew on the little mouth. So here I have a needle with some embroidery thread um, that I've already threaded through my needle and now I just have to um, knot this thread. And so to do that, you put the thread over the back of the needle, then you are going to wind the thread around the needle a few times, and then you're gonna hold it in place with your thumb and just pull the needle through, and this creates a little knot at the end so that it doesn't come through your piece when you're making it. Now we're gonna make a V right here, with the thread in between the two eyes. So do that, I'm gonna come from under here and then I wanna put it right about in this spot. So I'm gonna poke my needle up through, pull through, and then I am creating a V, so I'm gonna go right about here. I'm gonna poke my needle through and then pull it out of the bottom so it doesn't go through the back and we'll have my first little line right here then we'll do that again on the other side so we'll come up over here pull through and then down in that same spot that we just were at with that other V poke it through out through the bottom of the work and now our little pizza's got a cute little mouth so then now we need to fasten off this thread so that it stays and to do that you're going to turn your work inside out so you see the thread when it's gone through. You're going to put your needle through and just kind of poke it out so it'll go in and out on the other side. Then you're going to wrap the thread around the needle a few times like we did before. Hold it down, pull it through, and now this creates a knot right here on the piece instead of on the outside. Now we just need to trim this and set our needle aside, and now its face is completed.
It's time to start crocheting again, and we are going to switch back to the orange and yellow yarn. We ended our crocheting rows on the red one, and now we are going to switch back to the orange and yellow. So we are going to bring the orange and yellow yarn to the front of the piece so it'll cross over on the back. We'll take that red yarn, put it behind there, and then take out our stitch marker. And this is going to be our second to last decrease row on our stitches. So we are going to only do one single crochet. Put the stitch marker back in. And then we are going to decrease in the next stitch. And then do one single crochet again. Oops, missed the yarn. And then a decrease here on the next two stitches. Pull the yarn through. And we will do another one and a decrease. And just keep doing this till we get to the end. So we have two more that we have to do. So one stitch and a decrease. And then one more stitch. And then we'll get to the end of our row right there. And so we've got our little pieces and now we will go ahead and stuff it. For stuffing the pizza, I'm gonna remove my crochet hook from those loops and I'm going to take my stuffing here. I use just polyester fiber fill stuffing. You can get it at any craft store or at Walmart um, and it's super cheap. And so to start stuffing it, you're gonna take some of your stuffing and then we're gonna stick it through this bottom hole here. And we're just gonna stuff it on in there. And this is going to make our pizza poof up nicely. And you want, when you're stuffing, you want to kind of push it through so that it makes the piece evenly puff up. So here I have done that. And then I'm gonna keep doing this till it is completely filled. Once I've got my piece completely stuffed here, you'll see it's nice and poofy and filled with lots of fluff. We are going to finish this off by doing a last decrease row and that will seal up this hole right here. So we're gonna take our stitch marker out and we will decrease five around the entire piece. So we'll do our first one here. Decrease, that's one. And we'll do another one, two, and three. four, and one last one, and five. And now our piece is completely crocheted, so we just have to fasten this off by cutting the orange and yellow yarns here. And since we're not sewing anything on, we don't need to have a long tail. So we'll just pull that yarn through right there and tighten it and then we'll have a nice little knot and we also want to make sure that we cut off this red yarn too because we um, are done using that and then we just have to weave in these ends and I just do that by pulling all of these threads inside of this piece because we aren't going to really be doing anything else with these ends and so we're just going to make sure that we do this with each one of 
these pieces. So just pull all of those ends into your crocheted piece and you'll have all the ends weaved in. After you have woven in all the ends, there will be no more pieces hanging out of the little pizza and you'll have your adorable new friend completely finished. I really hope you guys like making this pattern and isn't it just so adorable and I can't wait to create more little video pattern tutorials for you guys and have fun making this.